Hello, designers. Welcome to the Maeve's Dust Jacket Project. I'm going to start with a bit about the history of YA dust jacket design. For one thing, publishers didn't always consider young readers. Um, when books for teenagers started being written and published more, though, um, it was pretty ubiquitous that there was a practice of always featuring a picture of the youthful protagonist's face on the cover. Um, so any older YA books that you see have the protagonist's or an image of the protagonist's face on the cover. Um, it was almost like it was required. Now, the fastest growing segment of publishing targets YA, the young adult market. And it's a great time to be a teenager reading books. <clears throat> it's also a great time to be designing dust jackets for YA books because there are so many great books to choose from. And pretty much anything goes in design now too. So, and for this assignment, you actually don't even need to stick to YA if there's some other book that you really love and want to do the dust jacket redesign for, that's an option. So you're gonna be designing all five parts of the dust jacket. And opening up the dust jacket, taking a dust jacket off a book and laying it out, you'll see that um, you start left to right with the inside back flap then the back cover, then the spine, the front cover, and the inside front flap. So let's talk about the inside back flap first. Uh, the image of the author is always on the inside back flap and some short biographical information about the author. And in this case, you're going to put an image of the designer, you, on the inside back flap as well with a little biographical information about yourself. The back cover often has a tagline to kind of draw people in and get them excited about what's inside the book um, and also glowing reviews. So all the people who've said nice things about the book will be featured on the back cover in quotes. Uh, the spine of the book will include the full title, the author's full name, and the publishing company. So those three things have to be on the spine. And just as an aside, you want to orient the text so that when the book is lying face up, you can read the spine. So that's how you know the text is oriented correctly. Onto the front cover, the most exciting part, the part that everyone sees first thing when they look at the book. Um, it'll have the title and the author. And then the Design needs to convey something meaningful about the book. It's the first thing people see when they look at the book. So you want it to be eye catching and you want to use all of your best design skills for this project. Then there's the inside front flap. It's usually an overview of a scene and gives potential readers an idea of what the book is about. So it introduces the characters, the setting and the plot usually. So you'll be designing all five parts of the dust jacket the inside back flap, the back cover, the spine, the front cover, and the inside front flap. Let's look at some examples to get you thinking. Um, you might wanna take notes, and if you see something that you like or want to avoid or something that gets you inspired, go ahead and jot that down so you remember. All right, I'm gonna talk about color. Color conveys mood. What kinds of things do you notice when you look at this dust jacket design? Here are some things that I noticed, so they might not be the same things that you are thinking, but pink is the first thing I see when I look at this dust jacket. Um, as far as mood, it seems like the mood is light, kind of girly and sort of fluffy, not really a serious story. Um, illustration style also conveys mood. So what do you notice on this dust jacket? Some things that I see are that it's light, humorous. Um, the, the girl that's animated on the cover kind of looks flirty and stylish. Um, so that conveys a little bit about the mood of the story. So imagery also conveys some thematic elements. When um, I look at this dust jacket, which you guys would be doing and thinking about what you're seeing, the kinds of things that I'm noticing are that it's dark, it has sort of a dark atmosphere. There are ominous clouds 
in the background and shadowy figures. So it's kind of a mysterious mood. And so that's telling me something about what this book and actually the series is going to be about. So this book has a strong graphic and the graphic kind of hints at a plot and some of the other design elements do as well. So with that red and black, I'm kind of sensing a sinister use of color here. Um, the design is very sparse and kind of harsh and bleak, and that hints at what the story is going to be like. Here's an example of strong use of color and really bold text. You can't really see it in the picture as well, but if you look at the actual book, um, the title is in shiny gold and it's embossed, so it stands up off the cover. So red and gold are the things that you notice. It seems passionate with that picture um, underneath, um, turbulent. And I threw this in here because I want to rem remember to tell you that if you want to redo a classic, that's totally okay. So you could choose a Gone with the Wind or a book like that. Um, I have a couple of other examples and you could do that for your dust jacket redesign. So sometimes design elements convey a time period so in this case, I'm sensing that it's kind of old timey. So this book is set in the 18th century. The setting is on a boat on the sea. It's pretty obvious. And there's a lot of movement in the, this design. So again, this is a classic that you could redo. So the imagery on this cover shows cultural references. Um, there are cultural motifs in the image, the landscape, pinpoints what the setting is for the story. Um, this might be something that you read in class. There's a mystic element, an element of mysticism. And again, you can redo a classic and that's another example. So as far as simplicity of design, this is a good example. There's um, just black on white and it looks like watercolor. Um, it's very simple in a way, but also kind of sophisticated. So there's a faceless image and it's conveying a somber mood to me and it's really artistic. So this is a chance to remind you to get really creative and use your original ideas. This uh, dust jacket design isn't like any other design out there. Now I have some non-examples to show you. <laughs> so here's an example of a book um, called The Atomic Bomb. And in my opinion, it would be hard to use fewer design skills in a piece. Um, the text is very plain, it's just a photo square. Um, but I do want to mention that if you wanna do a nonfiction book, that's totally okay for this project as well. So you might um, know a nonfiction book that you want to do the redesign for. Um, here's another nonfiction example. It seems like there's a little more design happening here, but it's still, just a black and white photo and some text. This book has a super long title. So the designer had to figure out a way to, you know, do a dust jacket design for this book and have to design around all those words. Um, since you get to choose the book that you're going to use, maybe you don't wanna choose a book that has such a long title so you have more room for images and use of color and things like that. Here's another example of a nonfiction book with a super, super long title. The author's name is also super long, but the design still kind of manages to be somewhat attractive. Some covers use only text, so there's no image at all on this cover. And this cover uses only text too, but the treatment of text is really unique. Um, the words turn into branches. The cover really kind of draws you in. I think it's a really striking cover. Um, you can recognize it from a distance. And for me, it makes me want to know more, like what's going on in this story. Um, here's a book that many of you might have read. It's The Living by Matt De La Pena. And I included this as an example. Um, you can't see it now, but if you take the dust jacket off the book and unfold it, you would see that the image on the front is part of a longer image that covers the entire book. So the rest of that wave goes on to the back of the book. And you might wanna use this technique in your design. 
Oh, star girl. This is Maves's favorite. Um, I'm not going to talk about it because I can't do it justice, but you should definitely hear him talk about it. He'll tell you about um, this cover and he has a story that goes with it. And then when the sequel came out, you can see the the designer kept with the original and just added to it with slight tweaks. Um, again, a very striking cover. It's not like any other covers, really noticeable. Um, this is my favorite dust jacket design. Um, also, you can't tell from this image, but the original cover had a detachable yellow police line um, that went over the dust jacket. And you can see the bullet hole on the front of the book. Um, if you turn the back the book around to the back, you can see the, the bullet hole where it came out. Um, so I think that's a really cool dust jacket design. And also like, you can't tell everything about this book by the cover, but it's called Shooter and it has a picture of a bullet hole on it. So you know that there were guns involved. All right, we're gonna transition to um, just an issue that we wanna make sure that you're aware of in publishing. It's called whitewashing. Um, and you might've heard it uh, talking, when people talked about the Oscars and like a lot of you know, what movies and things get whitewashed, but we want you to be aware of this issue in publishing in particular. Um, whitewashing happens when a publishing company represents a non-white character on the cover of a book with a white representation. Um, this has been something that's gone on for decades. Um, and the criteria are either the cover is whitewashed and shows a Caucasian model instead of a person of color, even though the story is about a person of color. Um, the cover can depict someone whose race seems purposely ambiguous or difficult to discern because the publishers don't want to sort of put it out there what the character's actual um, ethnicity or race is. Or often the character is shown in silhouette. So publishing companies use that a lot as well. Um, I didn't show you any examples of these up to this point, but I have one book that I really um, want to show you. And just so you can get an idea of what goes on um, with whitewashing in, pub in publications. So this is a book called Liar. And the protagonist in this, in this novel is described as an African-American girl with nappy hair. Like those are the words in the novel. Um, the cover that I'm showing you here is the, was the first cover that came out and it generated a lot of controversy, as you can tell. Um, people who had read the book said this obviously isn't the character in the book. Um, and that's something you wanna keep in mind as well when you're doing your dust jacket design. You have to make sure that you read the book and you want the image to convey you know, the reality of the story inside the book. There was such a public outcry in this case. Um, lots of librarians and bloggers and other authors were complaining um, that the publisher actually revised the cover. So that's unusual. Um, and most people were happy with this change. The next cover that they used avoided using a model at all. Um, so this is the cover that was on the paperback. And then I just wanted to show you the French cover because this cover is closest to the description of the character in the novel. Um, you guys are gonna be using your own original artwork and photography for this project. So I look forward to seeing all the diversity and the range of design and models and images that you're gonna be using um, in your dust jacket redesign. So before I go, I wanna mention the special prizes. So uh, Mr. Mays will describe how um, all of the, the judging and um, jurying works, but there are two special prizes that I want to make sure that you know about. One is the Madison Reads Prize, and the second one is the Special Sullivan Prize. So the Madison Reads Prize this year um, is someone redesigning the Madison Reads title for this year, which was The Edge of Lost by Christina McMorris. The author, the author visited Madison in March, so you may have seen her or met her. Um, she actually was happy with the cover, but not everyone liked it. Um, so if you choose this book, you redesign the dust jacket, and then you'll be considered in a special pool just for this fabulous prize. Um, the book is set in the 1930s. It grabs you from the first page and makes you keep wanting to turn the pages. And if you're interested in immigrants, mobsters, vaudevillians, Alcatraz, 
Um, there's a lot going on in this novel. It's really fun to read. The special Sullivan Prize this year um, is the book True Grit by Charles Portis. And I chose this book for a few reasons. As you can see, lots of people have tried. Um, it's a classic, it's been around for a long time. So there are lots of different covers out there, but I really look forward to seeing what someone in Mr. Maves' design class is gonna do with this novel. Um, it's a quick read if you haven't read it already, um, but it's super engaging. It's a story of 14 year old Maddie Ross who recounts the time when she sought retribution for the murder of her father by scoundrel Tom Chaney. Um, the story features some of the greatest characters in literature, and I, I really hope someone will take this on. So happy dust jacket redesigning. Please let me know if you need any help at all finding a book or if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to help. This is one of my most favorite projects. So thank you for your attention.